What's going on guys? Marco here with Dynasty Nerds bringing you part two of my rookie running back breakdown. I am going to be talking about running backs eight to 12 uh, for these this rookie class. And before I jump in, I want to remind you, use the link in the description below for 15% off the Nerd Herd, the GM tool, the Discord server, the Dynasty rankings, the extra podcast episode. We have tons and tons of content. You're going to want to use the link in the below, save some cash and win your Dynasty Leagues. All right, so let's jump into it. If you missed part one, go back and watch it. It came out a couple days ago, but we're going to start with a guy who's in a tier of his own as my running back eight, and that is Devon Achain. And really, man, I was had such a hard time ranking him. He's one of those guys where I think I'm lower than a lot of people on him, but I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up dropping in my rankings. When I look at Achain, Obviously, he's a, one of the most versatile players of this position, of this class. He is a huge, big play threat. He has a couple concerns that are really going to be limiting because, of course, we're talking fantasy football. So in the NFL, he might be an enormous playmaker, an awesome asset to an NFL team. But as a dynasty player, you're looking at a couple things. Longevity, which is a major concern for his size. Again, I talked about this in the last video. I'm not going to say height and weight because nothing is official. We haven't had the combine yet. I will mention if a concern, if there's a concern or if their size is a benefit for them as a player, just based on what we see on the field. But realistically, at the NFL, Devana Chain is someone who is probably going to measure very, very small, especially for the running back position. Maybe they move him out as a wide receiver, but even then he is it just doesn't have the body mass and size that lends to anyone believing he is going to be a long-term option. Um, especially for Dynasty. So longevity is a concern for me. His size and strength combination just isn't someone who is going to be a workhorse back. He is likely, if he's going to be remaining as a running back, he's going to be a third down playmaker for this team, which can work. I mean, he could be uh, a guy who comes onto the field on third downs and scores a lot because of his big play ability. He's going to be a PPR value. Um, but when I look at what he's able to do in standard leagues, even in PPR leagues at the overall running back position, I think eight is kind of the highest I can put him. Maybe he can jump a guy like Tank Bigsby if things don't work out. Um, like I'm hoping for Tank Bigsby when it comes to uh, just how he measures, how he tests, and his draft capital. But Devon Chain just has so many question marks that even his athleticism and his versatility in college isn't enough to get me over the hump. So we will see what he does. We will see what draft capital he gets. But right now, he is a guy who is a really awesome college player. He could be, unfortunately, put as a third down at best running back or a gadget player in the NFL, which just isn't something I'm willing to invest a ton in at uh or with my dynasty rosters in rookie drafts you know i'm okay throwing a middle second round pick at him if you're drafting right now but if you're waiting which i do recommend until these guys get drafted he might be a guy who really starts plummeting in people's rookie rankings all right the next guy on my list in the beginning of the next tier of players uh is a guy who a lot of people probably wanted to see much higher and i totally get it but it's Zach Evans. Now, Zach Evans has that size, speed, balance combination. He's a physical player that you really, really like to see. Some things that I need to note for Zach Evans. He's a very north-south runner. He can get caught up at the line of scrimmage. Um, he can really go east-west too often. So if he doesn't land with a team that has a really solid offensive line, that can be a concern. It can lead to a lot of negative plays or yard plays that just aren't really gaining much yards. And I think that's going to be a concern for him. The other thing is I don't think he's really that much, if at all, of a weapon in the receiving game. So that means that he's going to probably have to come off the field to, uh, on third down. And really as a pass blocker, he's not even giving you a reason to leave him on the field. So Zach Evans, he has the potential to jump into the next tier if things kind of go his way with the combine and draft capital. But as things stand now with the incomplete prospect profile we have, even though he was a very prolific college running back, I have concerns at the NFL level. He's coming in as my RB9. That can change, of course, but right now I'm keeping him there until we see some more uh, of what's going to happen in this offseason for Zach Evans. Okay. The next guy on my list is Chase Brown. Now, Brown has a really nice combination of receiving work, speed. Um, I, I really am curious to see what he does. I think he's more likely to end up as a third down back um, and have more longevity because he could probably be involved on special teams. Between the tackles is a major concern for Chase Brown. And so 
when I look at Chase Brown, I think that he is probably likely to drop rather than rise. Um, when I look at all of the people in this final tier here with Evans, Brown, the two guys I've got after him, he is probably the guy to drop the most um, of this group. But that being said, he could find a role in PPR leagues. He might be, you know, a third, mid third uh, round pick that might help you if you're uh, desperate at running back. So let's see what the draft capital looks like for him. Let's see what he looks like in the combine and we'll find out more about Chase Brown. Okay. So my last two guys are guys that I think could move up a little bit. Um, Kenny McIntosh out of Georgia has the size, size and speed that you really, really like to see. He's got solid contact balance. Um, he's a decisive runner. I think really when I look at uh, Kenny McIntosh, there's a few things that I'm worried about for him. He's an upright runner, which at the NFL level is going to be a hindrance. You got to figure out how to get your pad height, uh, pad level lower um, consistently. And he just hasn't been able to do that. And this, it's a common concern for these college running backs who are a little bit bigger. A couple of the guys who are above him in my rankings have the same issue, but it's not as much of an issue because they have all of the other intangibles and all of the other skill sets that kind of put them over the edge. Where I think uh, Kenny McIntosh is going to need to really, really figure out um, – how to adjust his pad height to succeed because he lacks the vision that some of the guys above him have. And he also doesn't have really those uh, running back instincts and running that running back IQ that you want to see because he hasn't really had that role to himself for the longest, you know, I mean, his college career is littered with a guy who shares the workload. And so we're hoping that he can have those things work out for him. But even though he's been a productive running back in college, I don't know if we're going to see consistent uh, NFL production from a guy like him. Okay. So the guy who's coming in at 12 for me, he's coming in at 12 and of this second video, you know, of my RBs part two, he is the guy I think is going to jump up the rankings more than anyone. If anyone is going to do it, it's Rashawn Johnson for the Texas Longhorns. He has of course been the backup, uh, long time backup to Bajan Robinson. So he hasn't really had his moment to shine. He is another guy who has pad height concerns or pad level concerns. We got to make sure that he's not running as upright because he is a big body. He's actually a pretty solid pass catcher. He's got really good contact balance. He's a very patient, athletic player at the running back position. Route running is something that can be a little bit inconsistent, but overall he's actually a pretty good route runner out of the backfield as well. Like I said, his his pad height, pad level needs to come down. He's too big of a target. Um, and, you know, just where his center of gravity, it doesn't really make sense when he's running, if he's going to be doing it at the NFL level. I think the other concern for him, and really the only other concern, is his lateral agility, his lateral movement. That's going to be something that slows him down. But, of course, that's why he's here coming in at my running back 12. But I don't know if it's going to be as much of a concern when you look at what his overall skill set is. So I think he's going to be a guy who maybe is a lower draft capital guy who lands on a team and could find a way into meaningful work if things roll his way. We'll see what the combine tells us. We'll see what draft capital tells us. But Rashawn Johnson's a guy I'm keeping my eye on because he is no joke when it comes to his talent. But there's obviously some things you need to be worried about. Okay, well, don't forget to use the link in the description below. Sign up for the Nerd Herd. Get all the discounts you could possibly imagine on incredible content that we've got coming this off season. Uh, don't forget to be kind, do good, and I'll see you on my next video. Peace.